this year we are travelling from Hanoi in Vietnam, down five days into Vietnam, crossing the border into Laos, three days in Laos, crossing into Cambodia and finishing in a place called Angkor Wat, which is the uh, UNESCO heritage site. Uh, and um, it's 1,900 kilometres and we're doing that in only 10 days. You don't have to be a super fit cyclist to do it, you just need to be a fairly fit person with a willingness to um, get on the bike and do something uh, serious to, to, to obviously to reach the, the goals and um, psychologically well you just have to get your head screwed into it you know it's uh, it's never going to be easy you're going to come across things that might not suit you we're, we're, we're assessing the cyclists all the time we're assessing the backup even the cameramen um, as to how they're going to cope with the uh, with this interaction amongst the, the team it's not easy, sometimes you do have little fallouts now and again, but generally speaking, the last few years have been fantastic and that's down to the committee and how we, how we assess people. If we don't like people, we don't even let them go on the trip. But generally speaking, it's nice people who, um, who put their names forward and uh, we, get a, we get a good team spirit. This year, the challenge will definitely offer beautiful landscape and mountains, definitely, and some off-road, so it's going to be a challenge for 2,000 kilometres. If you combine mountains with off-road, it's definitely going to be the, a tough one. The title sponsor this year is Nestlé, in particular their brand of Nescafe 3-in-1. It helps us a lot to be able to give money on, pass it on to renal patients. It helps us create awareness about kidney failure, which many people don't even understand or start to understand the problem. So sponsors like Nestle, Nescafe 3-in-1 are fundamental for us. It's an honor to be here. It's an honor to be part of this when you're giving something back to the society and you feel that you're doing something good, I mean we all try to do good things, but now it's not on an individual level, it's on a corporate level. If companies like ours do not sponsor these things, these activities cannot take place, all right? So I think it, it is a moral obligation to uh, sponsor uh, these events, to be able to create this activity. It's not only, once again, it's the activity which is being done, but it's the communication which is being spread all over to the media and therefore the end consumer who is drinking our Nescafe is also saying, ah, I'm not only, they're not only making money out of this, but they're giving me something back. And one of my relatives could be benefiting from this. So that is why it's extremely, um, not only important, but it's our responsibility to sponsor this. This is something which must be encouraged. And one man sees a local company investing because it's re it really believes in corporate social responsibility. That is something which is amazing. I must say a big thank you and uh, show also appreciation uh, towards all those involved um, from the cyclists towards um, the, the strategic partners who have contributed to something which can be described just in one word, beautiful. Lots of lots of work beforehand. Uh, it never stops. It's it's a twenty four hour, three hundred and sixty five day a year thing. Um, we never we never seem to get it off our mind life cycle. A um, lot of planning beforehand. Um, as always, we're going to go in a time September, which is not necessarily the easiest time. It's going to be hot at the end of the monsoon season. We've got a terrain is quite mountainous. We're going to go into countries which are. Um, certainly not third world countries, but they're not the richest countries in the world, so we're going to have to, there's going to be a lot of maybe uneven roads, mountainous terrain, so it's, it's you know, exciting stuff, it's what life cycle is all about, isn't it? Well, we're in Mota International Airport, the cyclists are currently going through passport control on the way to the plane, which will take us to Dubai, to our stop in Dubai and then off to Hanoi. We'll arrive tomorrow 1 p.m. Hanoi time, so it's about a seven hour and a nine hour flight split up. Um, so, you yeah, know, it's quite a flight. Everyone's going to have lots of time to think about what's, what's coming up. <laughs> to be honest, at the moment, we're just focusing on getting to Hanoi and then getting the bikes assembled again, getting to the accommodation, settling ourselves down and getting ready for the trip, which starts on Thursday. So we've got like a day and a half when we get there just to sort of settle down, have a look in Hanoi, which is about a very short time we've got off before the journey starts. Everyone is basically a bit anxious and uh, looking forward to this challenge and hopefully we can get there soon 
and uh, start setting up our bikes then and get moving. I am excited, it's like going through my mind, it's just like a long continuous inner scream. But it's a one of excitement too. It's like <laughs> what I mean, obviously it's a big thing as well, you know, 2000 kilometers. I haven't done anything like it. I know there are another five people, it's their first time as well, but looking forward to it. We've dismantled the bikes there on the plane already. They will change flights once we get to uh, Dubai and we'll then, then be processed and pushed forward onto uh, Hanoi, which is our final destination. So um, everything's going well, you know, we're, we're just having a bit of relaxation. There's free ice cream over here, unbelievably. So, so far so good. challenge always makes you stronger definitely because uh, you're going into foreign land okay okay the cycling is the same it's kilometers and kilometers okay but uh, you never know what you're going to encounter for example in the challenge I've done before which was last year it was the heat which was the biggest challenge this year we've got hills and rain okay so the rain seems to be like quite a big challenge um, as we're going to get wet obviously and we have to see how to cope with these new conditions so it's always a new challenge and it always yes it always makes you stronger every life cycle changes me in some majorly fundamental way i don't think there's any way it can not all of that happening in a distant foreign land you know and me being from small tiny malta so it's always a big it's always a big deal <laughs> it depends on if i manage to complete it i think it'll be a good thing because it's something I mean I want to be able to prove to myself it's something I can do so if I do succeed at it I feel pretty good to say. The team spirit is uh, very good everybody's looking forward to this challenge and um, uh, obviously we've done 17, a 17 week training program so uh, we got to know each other as we as we went along and uh, hopefully it, will, it will, all will go well for everybody. I think it's a, um, it's a strong team. I mean, frankly, really respect like everyone here. Is just like it, there's a lot of willpower in our room, I would say. And the ones who've been doing it like for years, it's, it's impressive. I mean. What I'm looking forward to the most is seeing all of those cyclists go past the finish line, nice, safe, and sound. Proud of what they've done, and everyone's great. Love everyone. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> Welcome to Vietnam. So now our group uh, fixed by and prepare for the day after tomorrow. We have a long journey from Hanoi to Laos and also to Siem Reap. So the, the bike now is fixed completely 90% uh, fixed. So I hope the group will be have a beautiful journey from Hanoi to Siem Reap. I'm very excited. Yeah, and I hope uh, we have a beautiful uh, trip in Vietnam, Laos and Cambodia. Till the day they start cycling, tomorrow morning we're going to be buying groceries. Me and another six people, that's going to be a big job because we have to buy groceries for four days for 31 people, which is a lot of groceries. The cyclists will be going around doing last minute things, maybe grabbing a coffee. Tomorrow we have a tour all together just to get the team together before we start because obviously on long stretches like this it's important that everyone has a really good team spirit because after 200 kilometers, no matter who you are, you're going to be in a bad mood. So it's important to work together. The temperature and the humidity is the biggest challenge I think for now and maybe the weather it might be. I don't know if I prefer the rain against the humidity or vice versa but we'll see. The longest distance is around 200 kilometers. 230. 230. 235 which I think is on day 7. Day 7 I think we're doing 235 kilometers. Day 8 we have 220 and then day 3 is 230 as well. For me I only, like I only go by the next day so uh, we have the route cards, 
before the, the day before I will read the root card carefully, I will plan it mentally. I think I, I've done life cycle before, so I know most of it is mental. So I need to prepare and go checkpoint by checkpoint. So there was a lot of organization for the backup, going through the game plan once more. I think for the backup now it's really become real because tomorrow we're going to have 24 cyclists on Vietnamese roads and we need to keep them safe and make sure that they're going in the right direction. So everybody's feeling the pressure but in a good way. The team dynamic is working really well. On backup there's me, Joe, Ray, Paul and Edward, the cameraman. And uh, yeah, they're all top guys and I'm sure the cyclists are going to be very safe. The first order of the day will be getting for the backup will be getting the food done for the vans, getting them in the vans, making sure all the vans have all the tools, first aid kits, water and signs they need. After that, about half an hour before the cyclists leave while they're filling up water and doing some last minute checks, myself and Mr. Bauer, Vietnamese tour leader, will go ahead and put signs on the road to make sure the road conditions haven't changed, make sure everything's still good, and throughout the day stop them at checkpoints, have the first vehicle set up checkpoints and get to the accommodation. We are just outside Hanoi. We had to travel by van because of the heavy traffic there is in the city. And uh, here it's not much better, but still it's, it's, there's a lot of traffic. But here we are, I can't believe this is gonna start. Let's bring it on. Do the best you can to protect yourself. Alright, enjoy obviously. Try to stay friends throughout. Keep away from any sharp objects when you're arguing. <laughs> but hopefully we get there safely, alright? Enjoy. Thank you, Ryan. Give it a bow, give it another 10 minutes and we'll go. Quarter two will leave. This is gonna go great. <laughs> We're all gonna be fine. <laughs> When Michael had a problem with the pedal, uh, Michael's pedal was not screwed on properly, so he had to do some adjustments. It's difficult to get it right, but hopefully he'll be able to continue, even though it's a bit, it's a bit difficult. If he, if he puts the bike up on the uh, van now, he's out of the challenge, even if he continues later on, he's out of the challenge. He will be able to cycle again, but he's not, he will not be successful in the challenge. I, at the beginning, it, I was I was very very excited and of all, all looking forward for the day. I know I knew it was going to be tough, but it didn't turn out as planned at all. After a few minutes, I, I started feeling the the pedal moving. I stopped immediately as I as I understood that it could be something which could be serious, and and I tried to fix it, but unfortunately I couldn't. So what happened was. The battle was, was not was not attached well to the to the crankset, and uh, eventually I couldn't continue. I had to stop. It was I couldn't believe it. I I, I tried many times to to, to get on the bike, um, but but I had to I had to finally say it, it's not possible to continue. Good job. Um, I appreciated a lot the support of the backup team. Um, they were very patient with me because I was trying to, to get on the bike even when it was impossible to continue. But, but finally, even, I, even that made me decide to stop. When I stopped, 
look, I, I, all I could think was, was of the people who, who I had committed to, of, of, of my wife, how many sacrifices she did for me, and, and all the people I love. <laughs> um, as soon as you get on, on, the, on the van, it's, the change is over, and I knew that. Um, uh, it's not easy for me to give up after so much training, after so much sacrifices, after so much commitment. I know that all this is for the patients after all. They cannot give up and neither, neither will I. So tomorrow I plan, I plan to, to get back on the bike and join the team and continue, I, hopefully I will, I will continue the rest of the challenge. Even though I know that now, it's, I know it first hand that things, anything can happen. And, uh, but we keep hoping for the best. The temperatures uh, today were very high. We had a, a very steep uphill all right for, of several kilometers and um, the humidity was very high as well and and obviously we had some problems with dehydration and there were some cyclists which even collapsed as well actually right at the first checkpoint um, i knew i was unwell um, I, I was really uh, nauseous and uh, sick um, I decided to press on uh, following the first checkpoint, even though I actually got sick at that checkpoint. Suddenly, I was really, really nauseous and dizzy. I couldn't tell actually whether traffic was uh, approaching me from the opposite lane or from uh, r right in front of me, directly towards me. At that point, I decided, listen, um, I just need to stop. It's not uh, worth, you know, risking such a tragic injury um, so that's what I did I just pulled up to the side of the road and there were the backup team right beside me so I told them listen I have to call it a day for, for, for now I was feeling faint um, as soon as I got to the second checkpoint in fact I sat down on the chair because I could feel my, my head spinning I could feel faint I, I wasn't feeling well I was starting to sway in the road um, uh, I was starting to see everything turn yellow. Oh, I, I couldn't, I couldn't continue. So I stopped, went to the side of the road, and I just flopped on the floor. Around 10 minutes later, you checked my blood pressure again, and it was still very, very low. It barely changed. He told me, I'm sorry, he told me, you cannot continue today. There's no way you're going to recover so quickly. One has to be very, very careful to hydrate himself and uh, drink a lot of fluids because in this kind of um, uh, in this kind of weather uh, enough is never enough now now they they recovered quite well but uh, but still um, if they are not going to drink all right they will face the same problems tomorrow so i so so my my job is to um, uh, bombard their minds regularly to drink, drink and drink. It does feel a bit um, sad. I do, I do feel disappointed in myself that I had to stop on the first day after 91 kilometers out of a 112 kilometer ride. So, yeah, I don't want it to ruin the challenge. I just want to continue and We'll see where that takes us. Uh, well, a little sad since I didn't manage to actually complete uh, the entire uh, journey. The plan is that, yes, I'll give it another go and that's what I'll do. After all, the goal is to raise awareness for the renal patients and uh, that's what we're doing. That's what we have done. That's what we're doing and we'll continue to do that. So 
that's the plan. I hope that the following days will be slightly more forgiving, but nonetheless, it's, it's been a great day. So we just had a cyclist fall off of their bike unfortunately because of a front brake issue. Um, she hit her knee pretty badly and is probably going to have to get into the vehicle. Paul is Paul, our doctor, is checking her out now. It's very disappointing, it's the first 20 kilometers of the ride. I'm sure it's very disappointing for her as well. But that's that's the challenge. That's that's just the way it goes. I don't know what happened. I know I went down the road. Oh, it's a gift now, but in Luita, man, I'm sure you're not going to tell it completely. Let's go through. I didn't come here for a holiday. I came here to cycle. But I was convinced I would have done it. I knew that very minute that something was wrong and that something serious was wrong because when you literally slide on the iskid on the on the tarmac i mean that's not good and uh, the minute i saw my i checked myself and i saw my knee um, my first instinct was putting my knee up and calling sandra who was a couple of meters away and i noticed there was joe in the van and he came rushing up because he saw me um, fall to the ground basically at that minute i knew that my life cycle challenge was at an end, came to an end. It was honestly a nightmare when Paul told me that when I fell, that was the beginning of my nightmare because I had a, my gut feeling told me, listen, it's a serious thing. It happened in the knee, so if it happened somewhere else in my thigh, in my calf, but being my knee and the way it was wide open, I mean, I knew that it was impossible. I'm disappointed till this very day. I mean, I see the road and I get really pissed off because I know I could have done it. I'm, I'm convinced. I don't know. I just don't want to remember about it, honestly. And the worst thing is I'm in pain and I can't even help others. Mm. At least I could have helped in the kitchen in the backup. I'm like an idiot. <laughs> oh, I can't yeah. even move. I think this might classify as one of the toughest days ever on a life cycle for me. Or if not, very close. Hopefully, get there in about 11, 12 kilometers, so that will be the end of day two.
end of day two today, we've uh, finished off from the 24 original cyclists. We've now down to 18, I believe. I think there's six dropped out. A uh, relentless day, as I say. The heat was 36 and the, um, the humidity was something like 95. The sweat never leaves you. So you're covering yourself all the time with uh, creams and stuff and it's just lying with a mess on your body. Uh, six have dropped out, we've had two injuries and we've got one mechanic and I can't remember the other one. Once, um, we, we, I'm waiting to hear from him now. Um, as I say, relentless day. First climb of the day was seven o'clock in the morning and we did a 17 kilometer climb up to the top of the hill. And then the rest of the day, as I say, was in the heat of the summer, it was up and down, undulating. And we finished in this place here, which is a name I can't remember. I can't pronounce, it's got X's in and all that stuff, so I'm not going to even try, I'm a Geordie. The uh, rest of the day you do your washing, you put on your creams, you sit around and have a coffee, try to sort of chew the fat as we say in England, generally just try to unwind, it's the best part of life cycle. There's no socialising, socialising is washing your underwear basically and uh, as I say having a coffee. Um, we'll be up again tomorrow at half four on the road by six and we've got 230 kilometers tomorrow down towards the coast. As I say, unrelenting for 10 days. For checkpoints today, on the third checkpoints, we realized that food was running low, so we came to a market to get supplies. We got uh, then we'll get some bananas and we'll see what's happening. They're, uh, they're cycling, so they look for carbs and sugar. So that's why a sandwich with, with jam would go down very well. Do it today. It was all undulating, very hot as usual. Um, thank God I found George and Christina and Kelvin, so we dropped it together and it wasn't that bad, you know. And uh, they are good company. I thought it was going to be worse, to be honest, but thank God we'll make it through. My body, I don't have one single bone or muscle that is not hurting everything even my fingers mentally i'm quite hard-headed you know mentally strong so we'll see we'll see Today was the longest day I believe we have on life cycle. It's 230k and it was actually my birthday. It started pretty badly. I had a, an issue with my bike, but we fixed that quite quickly. Then we set off. Um, the heat was intense again. The, the humidity was really bad and I just felt too sick. Um, just wasn't able 
able to, to carry on. I felt like I was going to faint, but I've been feeling like that for the last two days as well. Uh, it's just the heat and lack of sleep really, so I kind of had a bit of a bad day today. But I do plan to cycle again tomorrow unless there's any problems, so it should be okay. <laughs> so it's um, 4.30 in the morning, it's our fourth day on the road, we've got 175 kilometres and we're going on the coast towards a place called Donghoi, which is set near the beach. This is our second last day in uh, Vietnam before tomorrow when we cross the border. We do a half in Vietnam and cross the border into Laos, and that'll be um, day five. The route today, we've got a card here. That's the sort of route there. As you can see, we've got a nice big three-kilometer climb. Um, undulations, as we had yesterday, but not too bad. Sheffield zero, Southampton one. <laughs> I had to use my own. Wherever this is. Yeah. I just can't stop the airport. Julian will sort it out. Alright, the chances are what he'll tell you to do is drive down to the coast. And you swing away and you just go down the coast. Undulations, very hot, very humid, and we had a little small mountain in the middle, about four or five kilometers, which was horrendous, right in the middle of the day. So it was a killer. So we got a, um, about four kilometers from here, we'll, we'll hit the um, finish. And then uh, we've got a beach straight opposite the accommodation, so we're going to have a nice rewarding bacon lie in the, in the sea. Tomorrow we've got a killer, uh, we've got 210 kilometers, we've got to cross the border, but before we get the border we've got a 10 kilometer, probably the steepest hill we've had so far. I mean, the, the distances as well, you know, we don't make any apologies about it, that was the whole idea of life cycle at the start. Endurance, show people what we're willing to put up with for the sake of the real patients, hopefully get a response from the media and therefore the sponsors and therefore the public. When the climb starts, 95, 10% but not long. Being a bit of a cooler one, we've got a lot more shade. In these kind of, uh, these kind of uh, t temperatures, you, you have to be on the lookout for the hydration. It's very, 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 very important. You have to drink, and, and you have to drink a lot, a lot, um, because uh, um, uh, the heat here and the and the high uh, humidity um, uh, makes uh, elevate the the body temperature so high that uh, if you don't uh, hydrate yourself enough, um, you will collapse. The saturation is very high. All right, and number two, we are experiencing um, stomach cramps, all right? If it is a bug, it will subside in two to three days. If it persists, it's because of the melarone. Yeah. On the other hand, is it safe not to take the melarone in these conditions? I would say no. 
obviously you have to, to be careful as well because we are not so familiar with this exotic food here so you have to be careful you, you have to take uh, precautions for malaria you have to take the tablets you have to to apply anti-mosquito sprays as well i prepared the for uh, obviously for uh, um, uh, wounds that might that might encounter the the cyclist it's it's common that 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 uh, when the cyclists are tired all right you are not precautious enough on the bike and, and, and you might hurt yourself. So how to take care of wounds and uh, burns, dehydration as well. I also have some medications as well for, uh, for gastroenteritis, headaches, diarrhea, constipation, everything. Thank you I think only two guys don't like it today. Yeah, today, today, uh, number uh, day five uh, to reach the border between Laos uh, and Vietnam. Probably uh, 170k, so the long, uh, long journey today. So we reach to Laos. So uh, hopefully, uh, I hope on the rider reach the border before it's five, because we'll be close the border. Uh, day five, we're going up towards the Laos border. It's uh, we're hitting the border 170 kilometers. It's a 10 kilometer climb just before the border. And we're going to hit that at about one o'clock in the afternoon, which is going to be the hard part. Humidity again is 95. Seems it's just dripping all the time. Temperature is about 36, I think. And then from the border, we're going to go on to a place called uh, Shipon, which is the first stop over the low border. That's about 50 kilometers altogether, 215. On the other side, we've got an English guy who runs the company. No. He never said nothing, but one of the guys here away. one of the guys here has just said it might close at four o'clock so we're checking on that it's the fifth day and uh, it's very 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 tough uh, yesterday i was going almost to give up but I, with the help of others i managed i hope today is the fifth maybe half you know then we go to the end of it it's going to be a challenge and a challenge was We've got the border and we've got, and we've got a 17 kilometer climb. So it's a challenge and a challenge. came over the border last night, it was uh, about 41 kilometers over the border, so total mileage yesterday was 215. We're now in Laos uh, with new guides and their uh, backup team. Uh, we're in a place called Shipon, um, which is, to say, a small little hamlet really, we haven't had much chance to see. Had a good meal last night, thanks to the host. Um, good night's sleep, and now we've got 170 something kilometers to do today.
Uh, so I'm here representing Tiger Trail. We're a, um, a logistics company and a DMC based in Luang Prabang. Um, for life cycle this year, we're providing four minivans, four drivers, one guide, 400 liters of water every day, and uh, we're here taking them all the way to Cambodia. Um, well, quite quite remote places, so food water, communication, finding good places to stop with good facilities, good toilets, good shaded areas. Um, it's quite a lot of planning. We're in a place called Sepon, which is uh, about uh, well, 100 and something kilometers uh, from the border. Uh, we just traveled 168 kilometers uh, from our last destination been very hot as you can see my lips are all burnt I'm sunburnt and I'm tired and, and the thing now is I've got long days sitting on the bike so what you're getting now is all the stress the secondary injuries the things like the bum sores the stiff shoulders the stiff neck and this is what's going to drive the the cyclists to madness because you're sitting there with nothing to do but concentrate on the road whereas before we had a lot of hills and stuff now it's going to be long flat r rolling countryside and this is what the biggest mental problem is going to be. We've always said it's 60 percent mental, 40 percent fitness. I'm washing the clothes I suppose though. <laughs> Looking at the bike, make sure everything is okay and try to relax. Put some more cream and that's it just wait for the other day and have a good rest we're lucky because we're, we're sleeping seven eight hours previously we slept even three hours every minute we have it I and take opportunities to perform better on the cycle today it was a relatively short day so we finished at around two o'clock so we have the time to, to, to avoid, even to, to, to wash our clothes very well and, and dry them in the sun for once. And pamper a bit the bike as well. So uh, if you take care of the bike, it will take care of you on the, on the road. So you've got a, a big issue mentally, staying alert. Um, some of you are complaining yesterday about falling asleep on the on the bike. I can imagine that it was it was pretty hard going. These I think are as hard as days as when we were in the hills. We got 233 kilometers. We go all the way to a place called Paxis. There's no turnings hardly all the way down. If you look at your route card, it's literally straight. It's a straight road all the way towards the Cambodian border. Um, if you're averaging over 20 kilometers an hour, hopefully we'll be there by, most of us will be in by five, so we have another little bit of a period together and time to recuperate. All right, uh, main issues now, sun starting to affect you, make sure you're getting your factors on properly um, and hydrate because it's apparently it's going to be hot again, although I'm praying it stays like this, it'll be lovely, wouldn't it? A bit of cloud. Everybody's got bum sores. Yeah. You just get used to them after a while. Stand up as much as you can. Uh, what I do is I put it in the heavy gear and I do odd number of pedals, rest, odd number of pedals, rest, and go for a period of time like that, then sit down again. That's the easiest way to do it. If you do like seven pedals, you'll end up with a different leg, rest, seven pedals on the other leg, rest, and so on. It's a way of just breaking the monotony as well. All right, because if you sat down all the time, your backside will get really, really sore. Um, as I said before, I'm reading a book on Mark Beaumont going around the world. He had bum sores after about 20 days and he had 191 days. That's what I keep thinking about, so why the hell am I complaining?
I am back on the track and I feel great. I'm really glad that I'm back cycling, so I feel good. Primarily is I want to help my dad finish the challenge, because obviously now since I'm out of the challenge, might as well make use of my energy to help my dad finish on day 10. Feels great, obviously we get more time to bond. Um, and obviously we're cycling, so at the same time we're doing some exercise together. Uh, 122 kilometers. Uh, we've got uh, 233 to, to go together today on the way to Paxi towards the Cambodian border. Um, supposedly flat, but it's not. It's undulating. Road surface is quite gritty, which means you're going to have to work a little bit harder. Humidity started kicking in about after about two hours, so you're starting getting sweaty again. Now we're getting tired. And, legs and backside sores and stiff wrists all the things you expect sore lips sore back neck i'm thinking about my backside and my lips at the moment and then obviously it's just self-preservation to get you through the day and then at the end of it all then you start thinking about what what the benefits are for but at this moment in time you keep asking yourself what the hell am i doing here like you know because it does it's mentally it's it's mind-blowing I mean, I've tried not to think about it for seven days and it's bothered me for, well, every day, but today is the worst and uh, I, get the, I get the same pain I've had from an injury I picked up during training. So I'm uh, icing it every night, even when I'm not in pain. I am uh, keeping it elevated, so physio's orders, and I'm applying cream during checkpoints, which I didn't have to do all week, but uh, I'm doing today, so... dynamics are that we start as a group and we basically find our own pace and we ride with whoever we're comfortable with in that group. Sometimes it changes throughout the day and we're riding with one person one minute then the next minute you ride with somebody else. The fastest ones obviously get there first so they have the advantage of being able to get their accommodation sorted out, their washing sorted out, um, whereas the ones coming in late have got that dilemma about trying to do things in a hurry. called sweep vehicle which is sweeping up from behind looking after the ones at the back in case anybody gets injured drops out making sure nobody gets lost and the ones in the middle are setting up checkpoints and the one in the front the front vehicle which we call the scout vehicle it goes ahead and sets the signs accordingly making sure nobody gets the wrong directions on top of that you've got a directional card and obviously you've got GPS so nobody in theory should get lost So yesterday we came from Laos through the Cambodian border, which was a great experience. The guys were very helpful. 
Now they've rested in Strong Treng in Cambodia along the, one of the offshoots of the Mekong River. And they're getting ready for a 150 km day to Prea Vihea. That is going to be their last stop before they get to Angkor Wat, which is their final finish line. Everyone's really, really excited. Two days left. I think it's going to be a normal route. Not as boring as the last couple of days, because there are some, some slight inclines. But on the whole, I think it should be okay, because it's short, at least. At least psychologically, it's going to be, I think, 145 kilometers only, so it should be decent, let's put it that way. Malta is on my mind, yes, in the sense that now, in the last two days, we're, we're obviously close to finishing. So, basically, it's just conservation of ourselves to get to the finish. To the finish. Uh, so, we finished on the Cambodian border yesterday. We did 168 kilometers. Today, we're going to go to a place, and I'm looking at the name here, Priya Via Viti, which is in Cambodia, on the way to Siem Reap. It's about 145 kilometers, so it's the second shortest day we've had so far. Weather's looking a bit dodgy, um, so we're probably going to get rain again today. And then that leaves the last day to see him reap about 175k. It's okay, it's, it's, uh, it's all down here now. Day before the last. So we'll just take it easy. Try to avoid injuries. Because now the leg starts getting a bit tired, so let's not overdo it. Almost over. Today I'm really enjoying it because I don't have a lot of pain uh, compared to other days. Um, yeah, looking forward to we're almost last day tomorrow and uh, can't wait to celebrate. Well, when we left when you all left, we just went up the road, went to this big market area. Uh, driver just left us and said, we'll see you around. We went looking for things and we just, the money was just a major problem. Nobody spoke English. Um, but we got a few things and we got there in the end. No, no, morning. no, these ones are not. The people are good, very good, friendly. Yeah, very, yeah, very honest, I think. Yeah. Very honest, yeah, because we were just trusting them with the yeah. money, yeah. and they seemed to think and they were, you know, taking what they needed. Yeah, then you see that there was a girl, she, she saw oh, we, girl. Were, we were struggling, so she and just she took claimed to, just to come out to me. And a pad, would you like to come with us? <laughs> Uh, we're on day nine, we've got about 22 kilometers to go. It's been a bit of a mixed day, we've had a bit of rain, we've got soaking, now it's hot and humid again at the last checkpoint. Um, we're looking forward to the meal, obviously things, everybody's got injuries now, everybody's suffering from backside pains and all the normal stuff, uh, stiff wrists and uh, lip sores and what have you. Um, I think it's times that it's at the end when you really start questioning yourself why you're doing it. Um, anybody thinks this is a holiday, you know, I challenge them here and now, you know, come and try it. Try to do this for 10 days consecutive, 180 kilometers a day, and see what it feels like. Because it really does push you mentally and physically to the limits. 
uh, we've had you know nine dropouts there's 15 guys still doing it and every one of them showed courage the ones that dropped out dropped out for different reasons injuries and sickness and what have you um, but the ones still going they, they amaze me every year they amaze me um, and some you know not in, the, in their autumn years as well I mean there's some of them including myself who are getting a little bit past it if you like to say that but endurance wise we keep growing we try to do it and we want to get a response from the public to you know what we're doing and hopefully they respond by giving money People are super sweet, super humble, very, very, very friendly. The children are a bit timid, but then once you smile at them, they come running at you and they wave before they leave. Really sweet. The people are so friendly. The children are always saying hello, hello. They're so cute. People were beautiful, obviously. Some of the driving a little bit crazy in some of the built up areas. The tooting, the horn seems to be almost a cultural thing. Um, it's got to be one of the experiences in 21 years. Of, I think one of the best. It's fantastic. Yeah, really, it was people very friendly. They are very friendly and smile all the time and talk to these local people and they say hello, it's a kid on the way. I am to a guy. So probably it's the first time I meet a message to people. So very friendly. I welcome all of you coming to Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia. This is the last day. We're on our way down to Siem Reap, which is where Angkor Wat is situated, the Buddhist temple. Uh, we've got about another 60 odd kilometers to go. As you can see, we've got a Buddhist temple behind us. Few of the local kids, nice checkpoint, nice and easy now. Everybody's kind of enjoying it. What we need to do now is make the journey uh, finish. There's no hurry, everybody's well within time. How do I feel? Menestra. <laughs> I feel happy, exhausted, but after all we reached our aim of collecting money to reach the patients and secondly I did my utmost to see my wife arriving to the finish. I really don't know. <laughs> all right, Claire. Um, I don't know what to say. I'm so happy, overwhelmed. I didn't know. I, I, I didn't imagine I'd do it. But with the help of everyone and my sons as well, my husband and Charlie, that was with me all the way, I managed. 
it's hard, but when you complete the day, um, it's, it's a great satisfaction. I can't even explain. <laughs> Well done! It's just amazing. Amazing. Well done, mate. Well done. Well done. Unbelievable what you guys have done. Yeah, it feels good. There's like, I don't know. <laughs> That's a vibe, honestly, man. Just lost my words. Big red down. Well, people in need are always in need, you know, during their patients and any other sick people. So, uh, us people who are healthy, you know, should do these things to raise funds for those who are less fortunate than us. Sad to be over. <laughs> it's been good. It's been a difficult one, but it's been one of the best. It's the fourth one for me, and it's almost been the best one I've ever done. So, great experience. It was amazing. So happy, happy that I was able to take part. You know? Happy that I was given the chance to do it. I can do it because some people can't do it who'd like to do it. So, just happy, really. <laughs> It's all about the people and the renewal unit. We collect the money for them and we suffer as well with them, you know. We think of them and we're with them all the way. Okay, this flag a friend of mine gave it to me. She's uh, suffering from, from cancer but sickened by treatment and I cycled it actually for her. I offered it all for her. This. Oh, man. I need another checkpoint. I need another checkpoint. I need another checkpoint. Everyone needs someone, you know. So, uh, and the renal patients, I think it's only Life Cycle that, that take care of them. There's so many NGOs, and Life Cycle is the only one that takes care of them. So we need to do our utmost, you know. So the sweatshirt, and proud to be a part of the team. Uh, I dedicate this challenge, first of all, to my cousin who passed away last June. And secondly, to my colleague at uh, the first hospital, Pascal's group, who is a real patient, Katie Dato. There's not, there's no, not much awareness about kidney patients and uh, I think we have to do more. Very, very happy to have finished this quite demanding route. 
I will definitely take part in another life cycle, absolutely, in some form or other, definitely cycling, perhaps even support. Uh, those that suffer kidney failure have to go through the alleys. There are people, many people don't know this, who have to go to hospital three, four times a week, spend hours every day uh, hooked up to machines to have their blood filtered for them because their bodies can't do it for them. We are raising awareness, we're trying to raise funds for research but also for the equipment needed to help these people out and that is why life cycle really really matters. It is something that I have been aware of for many years. I've always supported, perhaps not as visibly as I would have thought I should have. This year I'm very happy to have finally literally got it on my bike. Well everyone is arriving at the finish so emotions are of course uh, running high. Um, it's been an amazing experience. Uh, it, it, was a, it was a rainy day throughout, but it was, it was still nice. Everyone knew it was coming to an end. So, so uh, the kilometers were counting down almost too quickly at the end. You know it's coming to an end, but it's a welcome end as well. Exhilarating. Last it's over. We look forward to celebrate now. It has been a lot of sacrifice. It's been very tough this year. It's my toughest. Um, but at the end, I, I really enjoyed it. I feel exhausted. <laughs> ten days after ten days. It's my eighth life cycle challenge. Um, last challenge I did was in 2012. So it was um, it was a great experience. Uh, this one, it's a challenge to remember. Well, life cycle. It's not only about the daily pain, it's, 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 it's all this, it's, it's go, evol revolves around the daily pain, but everyone who touches with life, life, life is, is positively touched. Um, this influence, everything, it's all about love, it's about suffering, um, and it's about passion. Well, it's been great, hasn't it? I mean, fantastic to see people come in, and emotions, amazing, people crying and singing and... I mean, a lot of times it's an anti-climax, but funnily enough, this time it doesn't feel like, I don't know why. Um, maybe some of the backup team have added to it as well, the characters in the backup team. Well, I mean, I keep saying it like you can't, you can, you can explain as much as you want, but unless these people, you know, who we try to talk to, the press people, unless they actually experience it themselves, you don't really know. You can't, exp you can't explain to somebody who's out on a bike for a, an average of about 180 kilometers a day. It's impossible, you know. It's a ton of, it's, it doesn't matter how fit you are, it's, all, it's a lot of psychology in there to keep going and going. I'm just pouring the rain back there, it was like a monsoon soaking wet we had about 50 kilometers still to go you're absolutely soaking you know just want to get back um but you can't explain it to somebody it's impossible they just think you're doing a bike ride you know i think they think you're delivering bread or something but unless you go through that you don't feel the same emotion as what they do now and that's what it's all about really Finally, the cyclists are getting their first view of Angkor Wat Temple, their final finish line, their final destination. They must all be very elated and very excited. I know I am, as well as the rest of the backup team. So God only knows what the cyclists must be feeling right now. Now this is Angkor Wat, and this place was built in early 12th centuries, and in 1113 80s to 1150 80s, 
and was built by Khmer Kings. His name is Surya Varaman. He spent 37 years to build this place, uh, dedicated to the Hindu god Vishnu. And later, this place was converted to the Buddhist temples. And this place is very big, surrounded by moat. In Hindu religion, this place symbol for the mountain Miru. This means the home of the Lord Vishnu, surrounded by the ocean. So here we are at the final destination. We've done uh, 10 days cycling. We've had a fantastic trip. It's been really tough at times. We've cycled through three countries. Uh, we, we lost one or two, obviously, through injuries and what have you. But basically, it's been great. The team's been fantastic. Have to thank, again, Nescaf 3-in-1 for their sponsorship. Without them, we couldn't do things like this. And we look forward to the next trip. And uh, just before I go, I'd just like to say, We've cycled all of Europe, West Africa, Japan. We've even been to Iceland, Australia and Oman. We call ourselves Life Cycle. Twenty-one years later. <laughs>